What's up guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we are talking squid fishing here in Puget Sound and we are talking the essentials you will need to Puget Sound fish these from the piers. We're going to talk about some other stuff in the future here about some other options from a boat but for the piers this is going to be a simplistic video to help you guys really get the right equipment to make you successful out on the water. So stay tuned with us, this is going to be a good one. So when we're talking squid fishing in Puget Sound guys, I've done a couple videos, you may have already seen them, that showcase the jigs and some of the other components to squid fishing. So I'll link those up in the description up here and you guys can really see those if you would like. I will make some more detailed versions of specific squid making on these jigs in another video, but we've already covered some of the basics on how to do it. But in this video, it's something that's really not talked about here in Puget Sound, really. And that is the gear that will get you where you need to go, what will make you successful, and how you can go about it. So. Just some simple, easy things that I will show you. These tools, I believe, are essential to success. Now, there are other ways to do it. There are other things you can have. So, by all means, this is not the end all, but trust me, these will help you a lot. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about is regarding your bucket. Now, what I mean by bucket, so squid, when you're fishing, you're up against a pier. Um, on the edge of a, a railing most likely and you need something to store your squid in. So what I do is if you can go find at your local hardware store a one gallon bucket or even something that's a three gallon. Both of those are the perfect size um, for what you're going to be doing. Now the limit is 10, 10 pounds of squid in Puget Sound. So it's quite a bit. Now a full one gallon of, of squid is probably going to be pretty close to that. So having a full bucket with you is going to really help you determine and make it easier for measuring that 10 pounds, which we'll get to in a second. But so your first item, I would say, is having a quality bucket with you. The second item is really a difference maker, and that is this wire basket. Found at the dollar store, this trash basket will really help because what you do is you stick it into your bucket and that will be where all your squid go into. Now what happens is they ink out water from what they release being in, in the water all fills in the bottom of the bucket you can literally separate these drain out your water and you can weigh just this so you literally are weighing more squid making it more efficient and your water and waste goes there. So bucket with the insert and the third thing pertaining to the same stuff you may have already seen me showing it but you need some kind of tying system right so again most of these docks are going to have some sort of railing system that you're standing next to and personally it makes it really nice when you can loop so let's pretend my arm here is the pier railing. So I can loop these ties around and boom, it's wrapped up. Um, there's a couple other ones that are more of a, a rubber tie, loops around, but that really makes a difference because then you're not having to pick it up off the ground. It's hanging directly off the edge, tied up perfectly. So that is the essential bucket. really feel like that's important because you want to make sure A, you're keeping track of your catch and B, you have something that you can weigh it with. Um, now, getting into the weight portion because like I said, 10 pounds. You don't want to guess on 10 pounds. It's a lot of squid, trust me, but some squid vary in size. You could get small 5, 6 inch squid to 12 inch squid and that can be a huge difference in how much that weighs and gets up there quickly so you're going to want to have a good scale with you now 
I personally always use my Connect Scale. I love this thing. Um, it attaches right to your phone app. So you have an ability with this scale to almost log your success. Because squid fishing is just like anything else. There are ways to be more successful. There are patterns that make you successful based on moon phases, tides. You can log all those things with that app. So it's really, I think, handy to keep track of how the season progresses. So some kind of quality scale, and you want it to have the hook. Because if I'm going to go take my squid, measuring in the bucket, right, the wire mesh bag makes that super easy. So that system will make sure you're legal and fishing appropriately and you're taking advantage of getting that 10 pounds. The third thing I will say, guys, as far as these piers go, now most of them have lighting systems already on the pier, so you may not have to do a whole lot extra. Now a lot of guys bring generators and a whole light system, and I'm gonna go into that in another video of how to set up your own light system for squid, but, something that I really feel is important to have with you and that is going to be a headlamp. So guys, a headlamp is crucial, right? A lot of times you're squid fishing at night, which is great. It is a successful time frame, but it can be tough seeing where you're going. You want to make sure that you can be safe, all those great things. You're going to want a good headlamp, right? So this is the BioLite headlamp and by far my favorite headlamp I've ever used. It's rechargeable, it's super bright as you saw there, has a couple different modes. I really feel like this is a game changer to the headlamp world. Now I've been using this since, gosh, about a year ago now, and have put it to the test. And really I feel this stands out among the rest to me, for you fishermen, so a BioLite headlamp is a great choice to have with you, but really any kind of headlamp to keep you safe, have you an ability of a light source that you can look at, your hands to tie stuff up or whatever, you're going to want something like this. Another essential tool is going to be to have some pair of pliers with you or a pair of scissors. When you're out there in Puget Sound, you may encounter hooking some objects or other species that you may not want to handle. So let's say you hook into a giant snag, right? And you bring it all up. Maybe you're fortunate enough that there's jigs on that snag. Maybe it's more a bunch of just seaweed and other things. You may not want to touch any of that. And having a good pair of pliers and scissors with you can really help to make the easier job of untangling. You may get entangled with somebody else and may have to cut your line. So that makes a huge difference, I feel like, in just making sure you're always having some tool with you like that. So we've now gone through more of your accessory tools, I would say, that make you successful, right? Those are little things that have, add to it, help you be where you want to be. Now, I personally, in addition to those tools, carry with me extra line. This is leader line, and actually, company's name is Line. So this is fluorocarbon. Um, I run 15 to 20 pound between my two jigs. I really feel like uh, it helps out. It's a little more stiff, so it doesn't wrap up as bad. Um, and it's been really, really good for me. So that's I keep some fluorocarbon. I keep a box of swivels with me just in case I have to retie or break something off. Um, and then I have a way that I'm organizing all my jigs. Now, I've seen some guys down at the pier who have some elaborate and really, really cool um, foam boards and stuff that they have the jigs inserted into. Yeah, I don't have that. So <laughs> if you want to do that, by all means, kudos to you. But what I like to do is just take a simple tackle box, right, and try and put my jigs where I can. This makes it easy for transport, makes it super easy to get to where I need to. 
even if you have like an old pill bottle, right? You can pick some of your favorite ones to sit in that. Again, makes it easy to access. So then what do I do after that, right? So I have all my stuff ready, I have it with me, I need somewhere to store it. I have a little dry bag, right, that I'll have everything into. Or you can go a bigger dry bag that has a shoulder strap and makes it really simple for you. The dry bag keeps all the gear dry, obviously, but in more importantly, everything's organized, with the shoulder strap, it's on you at all times because let's just be honest guys, you don't want to lose your stuff. Whether it's accidentally kicking it over the pier or potentially having someone walk away with it. I would hate to have that happen to anybody. So I make sure it's always on me. Um, and all my gear is protected from the elements because to be honest as well, winter time squid fishing is not always the most glamorous weather wise. You could be having snow super cold temperatures, it could be wet, rainy, doesn't really know what's going to happen with our Washington weather. So that's what you're going to make sure that you're protected. And with the elements, I really think it's crucial as well to then talk about clothing a little bit, right? Clothing is super important because the elements are going to be what they're going to be. You want to dry or start, you want to stay dry and be able to have a good time, right? So I layer up, I make it an emphasis for myself that I'm overly warm just to make sure I'm not gonna have a bad time. So I usually layer up with a sweatshirt over the top of my t-shirt. I then have some kind of a wind stopping material. This happens to be a Cabela's jacket that is for wind stopping. I do that and then have a good rain jacket. This is my Carhartt Storm Gear. It's a super, super nice um, rain jacket, but you guys know that there's tons of companies out there that have great rain gear. So that's what's more important is having a good rain jacket and a pair of pants, whether they're rubber bibs or something that's going to be able to protect your legs because there's nothing worse than being warm up and dry up top, but then soaking wet jeans from rain. So been there, done that. Uh, don't recommend it. So, clothing is an important piece as well. And lastly, I really would say the most important piece to the puzzle of being essential squid fishing is your rod system, right? I've talked about it a little bit before in my other videos that fishing rods for squid don't have to be complicated, right? You can have whatever trout rod potentially even whatever salmon rod you may have available, and you can go catch squid. No doubt about that, right? But what makes it even more efficient, and I've watched this from some of the experts down there on the piers, is how they do things, right? So quickly I'll show you. This happens to be, I knock everything over, my standard setup, right? This is my Twitch and Jig Velocity Rod. It's a seven foot, 15 pound, 20 pound braid on there. I got my two, two squid jigs, right? Bottom jig, top jig, and a float. That's the standard setup, and that will work every time. But what I have seen lately, and I went out and found one myself, is some of these guys that do really, really well are actually fishing with fly rods, if you can believe it. The fly rod gives you a little bit more length, typically, than your standard trout spinning rod. But what it does also give you is a way to feel the bite differently. A squid will come up and grab your jig, right? When they grab that jig, it's either going to put slack in your line or it's going to pull weight on it. So you can see with that rod tip, especially with the fly rod because they have a little bit more of a flex, when you're jigging up and down and doing what you're doing, you can pause it and when that squid grabs it, you're going to see it dip down. And you know immediately, there you go. It's a better feel. You don't have to have one of these by any means, guys. But I've started to pick one of these up for my own self to see what a difference that can make. Um, this happens to be just a cheapo 
fly rod combo that I had, gosh, from a couple of years ago, um, doing a fishing adventure with a buddy, and we were out, I think it was in Idaho, and this was all we could get. So you don't have to do anything expensive. You might even find something in a, a pawn shop, you know, who maybe a thrift store goodwill may have something that you can just grab. So those things will help you, I really feel, take it to the next level. So squid fishing essentials to really get you going. It, more on the other side of the gear is what we covered tonight. So I really hope that this helps you guys. Um, this is such a fun winter fishery to take on when everything else is going and not really all that great. We're in transition mode right now between winter steelhead and the salmon fishing. So squid provides a fun and super tasty way to go enjoy what Puget Sound has to offer. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really hope you can give us a thumbs up. Appreciate the, the comments you may have. Any other suggestions of stuff you would bring out with you? Let me know below. So I really appreciate it. There's a lot more coming. So stay tuned and we'll catch you on the water. Take care and fish out.